Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting sick, I think. But I'm going to install. And all packages. Again, I have no idea what folder it's sorted under. If you do, knock yourself out. Save yourself a little time. I don't. What we're scrolling down to is a program called OpenSSH. So just, I don't know if I already said this, but it's a good idea to keep yours plugged in just because we're doing some processes that really drain your battery. It's nice to just keep plugged in. Okay, there it is. OpenSSH. So tap it. And there's other open all by three letters. Make sure it's open SSH. Like open LTD and a bunch of other things. Open SSH. Install that. Wait. Okay, it says your first login will take 30 to 35 seconds so the host keys are being generated. So OK. It's going to finish. OK, hit the home button. And slide to unlock. OK, now you're not going to see like, a new application icon or anything. That's not an actual application that can be booted. Alright. Now the next thing you're gonna do, now if you like Qt FTP, um you can use it later, but for this point, at what we're going to do right now, you have to use WinSCB. I'm sorry. I know you all love Qt FTP, but it's just not gonna work. Okay, so um go to a link that I'm going to give you in the description of the video. I can't remember what said link is at the moment, so I'm just going to Google and get in. Uh, you know what? I've already downloaded it, so I'll put whatever it is in the description of the video, but um, I'll save myself a little time here. And it's in here somewhere. Wait for it. Hmm. Evidently it's not in here. Maybe I put it here. I'm going to turn this off real quick while I find my stupid file. Okay, here we go. I found my install file. Again, I'll give you the link in the description of the video of uh, where to download this. But once you get to it, just double click, hit run, hit allow. Again, on XP, remember that's going to pull up. Okay, now X out if anything else you've got pulled up. Make sure nothing's pulled up except for this. Let me X out and X. Okay, so it says this one stall. Close all other things. Okay, just hit next. And you can read this if you want to. I'm not going to. I have a life. Or do I? I don't know. But if I had a life, I don't think I'd be helping you guys. But Okay, just hit typical installation. Hit next. I like Norton Commander interface. If you don't like it, go with the other one. I prefer this one. And hit next again. And then hit install. And it'll do its thing. Okay. And it's going to say launch when SCP. Hit finish. Okay. Now, I've actually already got my sister's iPod set up in here. Now, when you boot this up, it's not going to show this. It's going to show a screen that looks like this. Okay? So, what you're going to do is on, under where it says host name, Go back over to your iPod and go to settings. Go to Wi Fi. Once more, guys, you have to have Wi Fi to do this. And hit the blue arrow beside the network that you're connected to. And it'll say IP address. And right next to it, it's. Well, you can't see, it's fuzzy. I want to have your own IP address. You can't, like, use mine. It's not going to work. But copy right in under host name whatever your iPod says its IP address is. So mine is 192.168.0.197. Again, yours is going to be different. Okay, so once you're done with that, make sure your port number is set to 22. Now username here, it's root R-O-O-T and then for the password is Alpine, A-L-P-I-N-E. Now the rest you can just leave as is. Just file protocol, SFTP, check the allow SCP setback. You don't have to touch anything else. And hit save. 
and hit OK. And name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it, I'm not going to tell you my name, because I have issues with privacy. But uh, I'm going to call it my name, iPod. Hit OK. OK. Now, yours is going to show up in a list. I've got my sister's in here as well. But just click on yours. Uh, click on yours and hit login. This is going to pull up. Remember how it said it's going to take 30 to 35 seconds for the coast keys? Yeah, that would be this point. And pretty darn, pretty soon, this might happen to you. It usually happens to me on the first time you sync. Here we go. It says, host is not answered for 15 seconds. Still waiting. Just don't touch anything. Remember? 30 to 35 seconds. So just keep sitting there. And eventually, this message will close. Don't hit abort. Okay? It's doing its thing. Just have to wait. Patience. Uh, and my battery's about to die again. Word for the wise, if you're ever going to buy a digital camera, make sure it's one that can really hold a charge while you're filming video. I realize the video drains battery fast, but still, this is pretty darn stupid. Alright, I'm going to turn this off, just save more battery life. So, eventually, something will pull up, and I'll come back once it pulls up. Okay, here we go. This just pulled up. I actually only had the camera off for like a solid two seconds. Okay, and so once this pulls up, just hit yes. And, voila. You are now inside your iPod, and you're good to go. So that's how you use WinSDP to access your iPod. Now, for lots of steps here, we're going to have to use a uh, terminal application within WinSDP. This is why you have to use WinSDP for this and not QFTP. So what you're going to do to access, because QFTP doesn't have the terminal. So you go up to the top, like the local, yada yada, go to commands, and you can hit open terminal, and that'll pull up this message, and then you're just going to hit OK. It's going to reconnect, and this will pull up. I don't do anything now because we don't need the terminal right now. Okay, so now that all that's working, I think this is a pretty decent stopping point. So I'm going to um, turn off my camera and recharge it for another hour. Hopefully it'll last longer than like 10 minutes this time. So uh, just I'm going to turn off my iPod at this point. Alrighty, I'm back with a brand new charge on this camera. Okay, so going to go ahead and turn my iPod back on now. And I'm going to set that down. And here, I, uh, as you can see, I closed WinFCP, so I'm just double click on it. And you're going to get, your computer will probably just say yours, but I've got two here. Don't actually, like, log in until, here we go, your iPod turns on. So, now, iTunes should pull up since it just turned on. And there's iTunes. So, once more, just eject your iPod and just exit out iTunes. And um, this is very important. Whenever you're like WinSCP or anything on your iPod or QFTP or whatever, whenever you're accessing the files on your iPod, make sure that you're not in sleep mode. Your iPod needs to be awake. Also, make sure that all lock set to never so that you don't go to sleep. Okay, so then click on your iPod and then just hit log in and it'll set you up. Okay, so now the issue, one issue with lots of older applications is that in 1.1.4, they move some folders around in the operating system. And so when a program looks at one place for a file, it's not there. So the big change in 1.1.4 is there used to be a folder here, right here in the root, called media, and it's not there anymore. So make sure that your directory is private slash var, var slash root. It should automatically go there once you uh, sign in for the first time. And uh, once you do that, you right click, go new, and then directory 